Hi, welcome everybody. This is our second take. I mess up. But hey, who who is the, who is perfect? Who is perfect? This man is coming close to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Adil Hussein, everybody. Uh, you might know him, uh, the Western audience might know him from Life of Pi. Uh, he has played the dad yeah. of Pi. And uh, yeah, but... And whoever has watched Star Trek Discovery... Just just wanted to say that you're in it. <laughs> Two episodes, right? Three episodes. Three episodes. Yeah. Okay, there you go. What, uh, what was the role again? Uh, I played the intergalactic uh, liaison. <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. Sahil, Aditya Sahil, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah, you're you're in this one as well, and a lot of great, great movies, Indian movies mostly, yeah, but uh, also a British movie that is uh, premiering at uh, yeah. Indo German Film Fest here, and there's also another one that you're premiering in. Uh, the first one is called Footprints on Water, uh, and uh, you're in Max Min and Miyazaki, uh, which we will talk about about later but uh, first of all let's go back to your roots yeah. how how did it come how, how did you get involved with movies uh, movies happened in my early life um, I come from a country where movies are sort of uh, like staple diet you know you you breathe movies you see you hear the songs you uh, constantly are surrounded by uh, people those who are singing uh, Indian people, they love uh, music, uh, who doesn't, but we sing a song, we sing songs of movies, mm -hmm. unlike uh, Western countries. Quick question here, did you ever perform a song, like, like a big song, uh, somewhere? Not, uh, yes, I did in English Vinglish, oh, which is, uh, I danced a little bit and I hated that <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a terrible dancer. <laughs> so movies happened quite early in my life. Um, my first ever movie, which I saw and I was totally bowled by uh, two characters. One was the Joker called, my name is Joker, Mera Naam Joker, which is a, a Hindi long film, had two intervals. And uh, one had to come out twice. So you remember it very well from <laughs> your childhood. That, oh, we went out and had peanuts, you know, after coming out from the hall yeah. and you took a break. And and there was this beautiful looking woman who was the teacher and uh, I was, I had such crush on her. <laughs> I still have. Uh, Simi Grewal. Did you ever get to meet her? Uh, no, I never met her. I wish I could. I mean, I, she's still very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I hope to meet her one day and so that happened and uh, early in my life in at the age of eight I did my first play mm -hmm. uh, it's a two-actor play I did school play or outside school, school play mm -hmm. yeah school <clears throat> and uh, after the play it was a half an hour play and after the play I came out of the stage and I asked my teacher who was the director I asked that uh, already half an hour has passed she said, yes, but I said, I felt like five minutes to me. It sort of time stood still for me. Mm. And that was magic. Like I never experienced something which is like that. Mm. You know? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Time stood still and I felt that, oh my God, this is amazing what, what happened, you know, in the play. Yeah. So uh, I continued to do plays every year. Uh, till I went to uh, university mm -hmm. uh, to do, you know, every year I did plays and at the age of 13, I think I was very influenced by this stand-up comedian mm -hmm. and I, I started doing stand-up comedy as well uh, and continued to do plays mm -hmm. and we had, we are lucky because the place I grew up in Assam is a very culturally vibrant place. Every neighborhood would have at least one theater group, one dance group, one music band, one sports, uh, you know, club. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you ever, by the way, you have a favorite play that you like to perform? Or a role? A uh, uh, favorite play I'd like to perform. I would like to do uh, King Lear now. My hair has gone gray. Mm -hmm. And I did one Shakespeare play for 10 years. Yeah. Othello. Othello, yeah, you were Othello, right? Yes, I was. So, um, yeah, so early on I started watching movies and, you know, ev like every Indian teenager wanted to dance around the trees with beautiful girls and all that. <laughs> but things change, you grow up a little bit and you watch world cinema and then you realize that, oh my God, okay, <laughs> there are other kinds of acting, other kinds yeah. of films. What changed my perspective about 
acting was this film called Papillon. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman, Steve McQueen, mm-hmm. and I thought when I saw it in eighty one or eighty two. Oh yeah, I thought it was seventy three, but I'm I know, sure. but it yeah, came it to came India out, right? much yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I mean, we had we have the dub dub versions here in Germany, yeah. so yeah. they also come late. So when I saw the movie, I felt that those are not actors; those were people picked up from the streets and made them. You know, mm-hmm. direct directors have made them act. Then I then I later realized that oh my god, is somebody who's a very famous actor. <laughs> then I saw his other films, Kramer vs. Kramer yeah. and, and Rainmaker and all that. Then I realized oh, I would like to be an actor like this guy, mm-hmm. who changes with the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, in India, most of the actors later when I studied in drama school, I realized there are three kinds of actors. Uh, one is called character actor, personality actor, and uh, demonstrative actor. Mm-hmm. Demonstrative actors are like those who are mime actors, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, demonstrate like, look, mm-hmm. I'm Very, smoking. With the body, yeah, with the body, it. and you showing it. But there are bad demonstrative actors also, mm-hmm. like Marcel Marceau is one of the finest, mm-hmm. and there are also bad mime actors. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and personality actors are most actors in the world are personality actors because they they play themselves all the time. Mm-hmm. And it works, and it sells. Can be a typecast at some point. Yeah, you get typecast, and it, you agree with that, and you live with it. Exactly. Yeah, and then character actors are those who changes their personality according to the demand of the character. Thank you. And I got drawn toward that, mm-hmm. and I realized later that it's a very tough thing to do. Yeah. It's not only growing your mustache or you know <laughs> building your body. It's the hardware change, but it's the software within mm-hmm. that you have to update your software in order to be the role. Mm-hmm. Speaking of body change here, uh, what is the what is the the most most amount of change that you've went through? Like I don't know, I'm talking Christian Bale, you know, right, being yeah. super skinny or <laughs> no? It's not about the, as I said. It's the hardware change. Yeah. Skinny and putting on weight is a hardware change. I that is also. But did you do that? I that's, had to do for one film, mm-hmm. but mostly it's about for me is how you change the inner, and so that you become unrecognizable without makeup. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the film I did called Sunrise, which I mentioned, uh, which I'll probably to talk about it later. Mm-hmm. Uh, my approach of uh, acting changed from that particular film. Um, I started. I started uh, from making things happen to letting things happen. Mm-hmm. That's a very, very different. Uh, it's a, it's it's a very thin line in between, but the results are diametrically opposite. In is, a way. is this acting? Does it have a name? Like I don't know. The first one is method acting. Uh, I yeah. take it, and is it like flexible acting? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't named it, but I would call it. It's inspired by Indian understanding of mm-hmm. how you live your life. Okay. That you surrender. Mm-hmm. Uh, you 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 hand over mm-hmm. and let the higher powers. It sounds esoteric, but it's not really. It's very simple, but not easy. Uh, you give up. Trust, trust acting. Trust, <laughs> trust acting. Yeah, <laughs> you give up your intelligent mind to dictate you, mm-hmm. but something beyond your intelligence must be allowed to be taken over, mm-hmm. uh, allowed to take over you. So you don't dance, but you are being danced mm-hmm. by the dance itself. Uh, the great uh, singers, dancers from India, those who we consider great, they don't they don't sing, but the song sings them. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's the difference. But it's a very difficult thing because to give up your control over yourself, oh, how difficult it is! Indeed. You're scared. It's almost jumping from a cliff without a parachute. And you may die or you may fly, and you trust that you will fly. And once you trust that, you start flying. Mm-hmm. Uh, not quite necessarily you flying and glide and all that. You might be, you know, wavering and you might yeah. be shaking. You <laughs> might be depending upon how well practiced you are. Yeah, well, was there a moment? Uh, uh, did this exact moment you jump off this cliff, this imaginary uh, cliff, and then you wiggle wobble, and then you spread your wings and finally fly. Where, where, yeah. Do you do you remember when that oh, moment yeah, came yeah. to you? Very clearly, it happened in a play, 
and I was doing a play which is a conversation between Krishna and Arjuna, mm -hmm. which is which are the two characters of Mahabharata, which is a great epic. Mm -hmm. uh, a play was done by Peter Brook uh, in 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 the West, mm -hmm. and this is a battlefield. Before the battle, the warrior Arjuna and his mentor Krishna. Yeah. Uh, they Krish, uh, the warrior started. Uh, he he was so taken aback by the magnitude of the stake that he had to kill his teacher and he had to kill his great grandfather who was in the opposite camp, mm -hmm. opposite side. And then he chickened out. He said, no, I can't fight. My God, how can I kill those people who I love, mm -hmm. respect and adore? Then his mentor said, aren't you, uh, aren't you a warrior? Why have you come to fight this war? And the warrior said, these are the reasons. And if these are the great reasons, and then why can't you fight? Mm. Anyway, so that's the play I was doing and in that play something happened, which is, as I said, it's a long story. But uh, if I put it uh, in a nutshell, it happened that my, without me being prepared, mm -hmm. uh, things happened. <laughs> and I jumped from the cliff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. without wanting to. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My director, mentor, yeah tried to push me basically just walked in i just walked nothing. in no i had to walk in because i had yeah, no yeah. choice yeah, yeah i was not willing to but <laughs> i surrendered i said okay i have no choice because we haven't rehearsed it and my mentor kept saying don't worry it'll be okay it'll yeah. be okay he's the writer director mm -hmm. and co-actor and he said don't worry about it it'll be fine i will just go for it mm -hmm. and i went for it and magic happened and from that day, I decided, oh, I understand now what my teacher used to say, don't think about it. Don't prepare what to do. Go there without preparation. Uh, the best place to do something creative is that you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Then only it can be creative. Otherwise, you already know what to do. It cannot be called creation. Mm -hmm. Creation means something which you have not tasted at all. You don't even know. It's, it's also like the, the approaches we like to take, obviously, just uh, try these ideas without like, you know, this, this, this sounds good, let's do it. Just let's do it because we want to get into it. And yeah. I think this is the same way you're doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, your your long uh, spanning passion and life of, in film uh, and theater is um, obviously really interesting. You did so many different roles, which are very cool and uh, exciting uh, but I wanted to know is there any movie lately that you have seen that you wish you would have been this Part or of? that character oh so many of them <laughs> <laughs> uh, to name uh, I saw some beautiful movies not recent movies but mm -hmm. like I saw uh, a Japanese film called The Floating uh, Willows mm -hmm. Uh, or I would like to be in all the movies of Kurosawa. <laughs> I'd like to be in all the movies of Ozu. Yeah. What's your favorite of Kurosawa? Uh, all of them. The, the last films he made, there's is an unsung. Dreams? Movie. Dreams. Yeah. Oh, God. And I, there is another Coppola movie, very less talked about, called mm -hmm. Teatro. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that movie? I haven't seen it, but yeah. I heard about it. It's, it's, I think it's his best. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Not Godfather. I think you heard it here first, yeah. people. <laughs> Teatro is Coppola's best film, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. It's beautiful. I wish I was playing that role. There's so many of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, any of the newer ones that you wish you had been in? All uh, right. Also Indian, maybe. Uh, I know you wanted to be. Uh, Ram Charan's role in RRR. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that because I think it needs a different set of skills. Yeah, I don't have it. But uh, <laughs> but is there anything else uh, on the on the more uh, drama side? Um, probably. Um, I could have seen you as uh, uh, Ajay Devgan uh, in Gangobai. In Gangobai. You think so? Yeah, I think you could have done that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't seen it, so I have no clue. Oh, okay. I, I think you could have done that. Okay. <laughs> Watch it. It's good. I thought it was a good movie. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll let you think on it. If, if you if you thought of something lately, let let us know. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, we talked about the movies that you have at this uh, film festival already. We named them. Yeah. Footprints on Water is the first one. And uh, uh, we talked to Natalia, uh, who uh, directed this movie. She's also She was also here. And uh, yeah, she told us the story, how you guys got together. So yeah. that's uh, really nice. Uh, so check out this interview as well if you want to know that story. Um, but uh, I wanted to know what um, what did you take uh, with, with you for yourself uh, after you were done with this movie? Maybe from the character itself or maybe from the topic of this movie well i think my the prime ingredient of any possible uh, practitioner of art would be empathy i think that's what i feel without that um, it, it is not wholesome mm -hmm. um, and but at the same time i realize that unless you are in a particular situation you do not empathize enough with the other. So in terms of uh, this film, Footprints on Water, I started seeing their world from their perspective, being playing one of them. Um, I would like to also see the world from the perspective of the exploiter, mm -hmm. who exploited the, the un, undocumented uh, you know, immigrants. Uh, I would like to also play one of those roles and find reasons what what they do what they did how how hard, did how hard is that aspect to play such a role because because like i have to have to say i'm uh, i'm a not sucker but uh, i i really get emotional when it comes to injustice uh, uh of people or in in, in those certain situations so i i really feel like anger right towards now, the people so <laughs> exactly but but uh, but how is it how is it as an actor to play these kind of roles especially after you said it now i think if i tell you a story that will answer that question mm -hmm. so uh, what is what justice means to me so there was this yogi who sat on a rock for 12 years and the uh, and gods are very happy came to him and said what do you want he said i have you know i have sat on this rock for 12 years whatever you think is just give it to me mm -hmm. then god said don't ask for justice ask what do you want mm -hmm. he said that's what i want i want justice i have worked for 12 years i want what is what do you think is just for me God said, okay, if you are insisting upon it, so you sat on this rock for 12 years? He said, yes, I meditated, I did my yoga. He said, okay, now the rock will sit on you for 12 mm. years. <laughs> Justice is a very, the lowest, uh, lowest form of mechanism put in the human society to maintain law and order. Mm -hmm. It's to help people tolerate each other. We want harmony. We want unconditional love. So justice can bother you, mm -hmm. but it's not the greatest thing. It's almost like revenge mm -hmm. for me. Okay. Official revenge is justice <laughs> system. You killed my mother, the state is going to kill you or, or put yeah, you in yeah, prison yeah. for lifetime. But that's revenge. That's mm -hmm. not just, that's justice for you. Yeah. the understanding of justice just on so the paper we want a better society that means evolution has to happen from the day the child is born in the in the, in the schools mm -hmm. we need a better education society uh, a, a, a education system mm -hmm. that's so that people become compassionate that's why art education is very important and i think in most of the world we follow an education system to make you a person who would earn some money mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a money earning machine most of the time. In some countries is a bit better than other countries. So uh, yeah, justice is for me is that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting standpoint. I mean, it always depends obviously on the definition yeah. of justice, but yes. I think I, conditionally I would say yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. justice means the same for me. That's what I want yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. for for the people out there yeah. to be uh, uh, equals yes. in that kind yes. of regard. And. Um, yeah, uh, this this yeah this is uh, the the topic of the movie is uh, very relevant because it hasn't been in the media and all of that and so I uh, thank you for taking on this role and uh, giving giving it your uh, your all to 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 make it more 
known in the public? I was paid pretty well, so I had to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there's the money again. <laughs> no justice. <laughs> okay, okay. But um, yeah, you have another movie here at the film festival and uh, it's called uh, Max Min and Miyazaki, as we said. And uh, it's uh, obviously... Um, uh, lean, the, the word play is on uh, Miyazaki, uh, Hay Hayao Miyazaki. Okay. And uh, uh, are you a fan, or have, how, what movie uh, is your favorite? I, I, well, I, yeah, I can't call me a fan, but I'm aware of his work. Okay. Yeah. What, uh, like, what was the latest one you've watched? Maybe I then? don't even remember when I watched his latest one. No. I mean, he's been a, he's been doing work for quite yeah. some time. So yeah, there's a lot to watch. Uh, I think it's like around 30 movies or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So he has a lot, lot to go on, people. My director Check it out. Is, uh, director writer is a big fan of him. Uh, from, from that movie, or <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Of yeah, course, yeah. of course. I mean, <laughs> otherwise he wouldn't put it in, no? yeah. obviously. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you have uh, you have had uh, some. So you have some lovely uh, co-stars uh, in yeah. in this one. Uh, it's uh, it felt very uh, much intimate and uh, you, like a family from from what came on to the screen. Yeah. And yeah, to say a little bit something about the movie, it's a, a tale about three generations of people and. Uh, I, what uh, kind of ideals and ideologies they have and how it differs and how they come together, yeah. right? Is that Reconciliation, mm -hmm. I would put it that way. The theme of it is reconciliation. Mm -hmm. uh, in spite of having opposite views about things, about life, about issues and, you know, situations, how people can possibly come together mm -hmm. and break their rigid boundaries yeah and there have been some a couple scenes where i uh was very teary-eyed uh, especially the one where you're standing by the window and listening I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling not spoiling anything for the people but yeah this this got me this got me very much <laughs> uh like uh let, let's talk about your acting in in, in that kind of sense uh, you about talking letting it letting it go letting it like guided by your feelings yeah. um what what uh, how do you feel in this kind of scene uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel the way I felt in the scene. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> um, I guess every. So this is this is my uh, view, uh, and I deeply believe in this story that all characters, all human beings, of all kinds, is within. Mm -hmm. uh, we are different versions, permutation combinations of, you know, the other, the idea of the other. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a beautiful quote by a very famous uh, yogi of India called Ramana Maharshi. So he was asked once, uh, how do you want us to treat the other? And he answered, he said, there is no other. It's, it's well, only me, right? It's only me. Yeah. So I feel that what I have experienced as a practitioner of art of acting uh, whenever I like I you know I, I hear some lines I the text had been written by somebody mm -hmm. like Shakespeare is dead 500 years ago but when I read Othello this is just the words and me mm -hmm. and it evoke something when I read had it pleased heaven to mm -hmm. try with affliction mm -hmm. had the rain all kinds of sores and shames on my bare head and given to captivity, me and my most hopes I should have found in some place of my soul a drop of patience. But there, where I've gone out of my heart, there I must live or bear no life. When I read, it's something happens. So if you're open, if you are, as I said, again, if you are empathetic, if you are a person with, 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 with uh, fluidity and flexibility of, of, you have worked hard enough to get rid of your ideas of good and bad and correct and what is incorrect and what is wrong and what is right. Things will hit you and you become a vulnerable person mm -hmm. without any defense mechanism. And that is uh, the way that probably text, the texts hit me when I do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, did I answer your question? I guess I did. Right? Yeah, in, in a way, you did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is how I just let things happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And um, 
I don't want to say it's a, it's a parallel right there or like a like a one-on-one -on -one comparison, but uh, you told us uh, earlier in take one about the story about your dad and the BBC, yep. and that he didn't uh, see you as a serious actor, or that there's something of a uh, that you can make a living off. Potentially, yeah. And uh, is that is parallel in this scene as well? Because the father talks yeah. about the son. Is that did you yeah. did you feel that? Yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. That if you have lived your life and you have no judgment throughout uh, your life and or judgment but less mm. and then you empathize with your dad that my dad wanted that for me and he was worried whether I'll be able to live my life or artistically aesthetically he disagreed mm. that that there is a line in this film Max Min and Miyazaki where he say will he be singing these jingles when he's 50 years old <laughs> he did not like the idea of like us, his son mm. and My father is a legendary cl a classical singer, mm. and our son is going to sing this stupid jingles yeah, for fair cream <laughs> for fair cream and or to sell soaps. Yeah. How is it beautiful, you know? Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, it's just for paying the bills, right? Um, but uh, yeah, speaking of your uh, son of the movie, uh, Siddharth, Siddharth. Uh, and he, uh, he, uh, yeah, because I'm uh, interviewing him next week, and okay. uh, he asked me a question for you. So um, the question is, uh, or uh, the the question he gave me is that uh, what was your uh, what what scene surprised you most that you were in? Is there, is there a scene that had like got you? You know, basically. I think that's the scene you just mentioned. All right. Yeah. Because I had no idea. I just, mm -hmm. he said, okay, you're going to stand there and they are going to talk. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. Easy. So that was the direction. <laughs> and I know that what they are going to talk about, yeah, but yeah. I didn't think about it. Okay. As I said, I don't mm -hmm. follow yeah, yeah, that yeah, approach. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That I, so I know they're going to talk about this, that, you know, he's, he's, he, he, why he didn't stay with me in his, in my house. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the face to come back and all that. But how would I feel? I had no clue. So I was standing there and they were talking and things happened. And I was like, wow, I, I would, I didn't realize this, this is how it's going to hit me. Mm -hmm. Those words. And if rest of the scenes, you sort of unconsciously know, okay, this is the scene. Like when there's a scene between me and my son, uh, Siddharth, mm -hmm. that, you know, I should have asked you how you are doing when we are having that. That was also pretty, and then I start sneezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that scene, which was also very, very uh, that moving scene for me as well. But I knew that. Mm. But here I had no line, that there's no text. I'm not in the scene in a way. <laughs> They are doing the scene, and here I am standing, and I'm like, okay, that's my dad talking, you know? <laughs> and you receive the words, and you let it, let things happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, you have a question for Siddharth Beck, if I'm going to interview him next week? Uh, question for Siddharth. How did he do, uh, you know, I would like to ask him that what was his uh, feeling about his father? <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I do a good job? <laughs> There you go. We, we will ask him. We will, we will tag you and let you know for sure. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to ask him, why, how could he sneeze so often? How, how did this work? <laughs> Because, yeah, he's allergic like, for, the, for, for cat hair. And uh, yeah, so he's sneezing a lot, actually. <laughs> It's really funny. But, uh, yeah, so is, is there anything, like I asked you for uh, Footprints on Water that you took from that movie. Is there something uh, that you took from this movie? Yeah, I, again, I think reaffirmation about uh, the importance of uh, reconciliation. Uh, and reconciliation is a consequence of, I think, again, empathy. Mm -hmm. That if you look at everybody with, with respect, with love, with unconditional love, if you can, then you, you find a meeting ground, you find a common ground to come together. You have differences, but you don't have to hate each other. Because of the differences, you can always talk. You can always have a chat. You can always have a dialogue. It cannot, not necessarily be has to be monologue. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's, that's how it should be. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to ask the last question, but uh, this would be: uh, Can you give uh, the, the young actors out there some tips? But I guess. If you have listened to this uh, interview or have watched it, uh, you should know uh, what the what the tip is here in this case, right? Already, uh, I think <laughs> all of the above. Yeah, <laughs> I think the the only tip which I generally give it to myself, mm -hmm. so then I have the right to also share it. I think first of all to find out is have you cast yourself in the right role in life? 
that do you really want to be practicing acting mm -hmm. or you're doing it and if you have why are you doing it are you doing it for fame name then it may come it may not come but if you love it then you would do it anyway and if you get name and fame that's bonus so to find out i again ask myself that uh, would you be willing to act without getting recognized or paid for next 15 years if you are then you love it <coughs> excuse me but uh, if you are not then that means you are casting yourself in the wrong role in life indeed all right there you heard it, people very wise words <laughs> uh, i would say and uh, yeah thank you so much Adil for taking the time talking to us uh, it was uh, even for take two it was still interesting and new and uh, it, it seriously was we changed we changed the questions and you changed the answers I like that so thank you so much and uh, yeah this will be up uh, and uh, please share uh, this great interview with all the people out there yes thank you for very much Tom thank you my friend and uh, we must also talk about masala kraut no yeah, you've you've done it twice and good Okay. What do you mean? Masala kraut? Masala kraut. What is masala kraut? Uh, masala kraut, yeah, it's our Indian uh, movie series uh, that we do here in Berlin. And uh, uh, this series uh, shows at least one Indian movie every week. Uh, we try to get all the regional cinemas yeah. in there involved. And uh, yeah, we uh, the, the name comes from uh, sour kraut. The, yeah, the, the, or, uh, yeah, the... the, the um, The Germans were called Krauts in World War II, so uh, since two Germans do Indian movies, Masala Kraut makes sense, <laughs> and that's that's how we did it. So thank you, thank you for asking. Uh, it is uh, yeah, it is our dear project, and we love to show some of your movies in the future as well. And if you're back in Berlin, come to our screenings. Yep, I will. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you guys. All right, we're out. <laughs>